Hello and welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 5th of July. Now BA45 does seem to be turning out to be a bigger problem than people had anticipated, indeed than I had anticipated. There are increased hospitalisations. Now the main data that we're going to get from this is from Portugal and from South Africa who have already had their BA45 peak. So let's just look at that in terms of hospitalisation. So we see that Portugal is starting to go down now, but it has been quite high, quite a lot higher than the United Kingdom is now, as the United Kingdom is currently going up. Australia, which has BA45 also going up. Canada, thankfully, is still going down, but we are seeing this upward trend in the United States. Now, these hospital data from South Africa are accurate. So South Africa has not shown the increase with BA45, despite the variant sweeping through the country. So what are we going to be more like? Well, given that we're a European country, I would have thought the best analogy here really is Portugal. So I'm expecting hospitalizations, unfortunately, to start going up in the United Kingdom and the United States a bit more. Now, here's the current number of cases, which, as we know, is going up. Actually, not cases. This is infections. Well, it's actually uh, symptomatic infections <laughs> from COVID symptom tracker data. And we see it's nearly uh, at the, uh, the peak that we had back in April. So that is going up quite dramatically in terms of reported, uh, reported symptomatic cases. So let's look at this. Um, reinfections are now common. Generally, infection reinfections tend to be milder uh, the second or third time around, which is good, but not always, but usually. So um, I'm going to look at a couple of papers today just by way of um, what's going on. So we're going to look at this one briefly about the immune escape. And then we're going to look at this one in a little more detail about neutralizing escape by SARS coronavirus to Omicron subvariants. So that's kind of what we're looking at. But let's have a look at what people are saying about this first, because that summarises it if you're short of time. So Danny Altman, Professor of uh, Immunology, Imperial College London. Omicron is poorly immunogenic. That means that catching it offers little extra protection against catching it again. This is not what we had expected. This We'd expected herd immunity. It clearly is not happening because of all these new variants. We're moving to endemicity, but it's very disappointing this has happened. And it's it's concerning that we have this current increase in hospitalizations. Tim Spector, definitely a lot of people who got COVID at the start of the year who are getting it again this year, 2022, including some with BA4 or 5 who had BA1 or 2 just four months ago. Seems to be rare within three months, but then four, five, six months, unfortunately, a lot of people are getting reinfected. Now, just a brief look at this paper here to get some of the harder science behind this. I put the links there so you can always go and peruse them for yourself. Both pretty readable papers today, actually. No major problems with them, actually, um, in terms of understanding them. <laughs> so um, this is this one, um, BA-2121, uh, which, of course, is the one that's been most prevalent in the United States. BA45 escape antibodies listed by Omicron infection. So that's the paper. Uh, new subvariants notably evade neutralizing antibodies that are elicited by SARS coronavirus to infection and vaccination. And we'll be looking at data that shows that natural infection does seem to be better than vaccination uh, shortly. Although that's not saying vaccination is necessary will be giving evidence that, that, that it is to prevent against severe disease. But thankfully, most of us have had that now. Um, so vaccine booster based on BA1 virus. This is still from that. This is still from uh, still a quote from this paper here. Um, vaccine boosters based on BA1 virus. So, of course, Pfizer and Moderna have been working on BA1 uh, vaccine updates uh, but this paper says it may not achieve broad spectrum protection against new omicron variants so this idea that we had probably well i've had this idea for 18 months now uh, certainly a year ago this is well formulated that um what we, what, we, what we thought was that as, as the virus evolved it would be quite easy to make vaccines against the new variants but they're simply not working 
they are not generating the immunity that's required because the variants are moving on so quickly. So this initial faith that we had that science could keep up, it can't. The evolution of the virus is moving more quickly than the development of the vaccines. Yale School of Medicine, Connecticut. Um, my personal belief is that while there may be some advantage to having an Omicron specific vaccine, I think it will be of marginal benefit over staying current with the existing vaccines and boosters. Um, it's not keeping up to date. Despite immune evasion, the expectation can be that vaccines still provide protection against serious disease. Now, this is pretty important. So lots of people getting reinfected, but looking like um, still getting protection against serious disease. Uh, what we've learned clinically is that it's most important to stay up to date with uh, vaccinations. So this is uh, this is Dr. Uh, um, Ogbagu. Og Sorry, sir, pronouncing your name completely wrong. I know. Anyway, Yale School of Medicine, Connecticut. So this is this is a, f a fairly authoritative voice here. Saying that uh, keeping up to date with boosters is necessary, um, although it doesn't differentiate between natural immunity and vaccine immunity, and I'm going to give some evidence that that um, natural immunity confers a lot of protection in a minute. Um, to main high to high levels of COVID-19 antibodies circulating in the blood, I think this is the mistake a lot of these people make. Now, of course, th these are very senior professors and doctors. It's not for me to say they're making mistakes. But there does seem to be a trend not to really account for the uh, the B and T cell, the, the, the lymphocyte immunity. There still seems to be this trend to focus on antibodies, which is really only a relatively small part or a temporary part of the story. Uh, Kiyo Sato, University of Tokyo. Tokyo. New subvariants may have evolved to uh, refavor infection of the lung cells. Now, this is bad news. And um, what, 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 what Dr. Sato is saying here is that, of course, the Omicron variants, BA1, BA2, particularly affected the upper airways. We knew that by far and away the most common feature was a runny nose with these, whereas the previous Alpha and Delta variants had more likelihood to infect the lungs, therefore cause the acute respiratory distress syndrome, which was one of the fatal complications. So it looks like the reason for the increased hospitalizations with the BA4-5 is because the infection is going lower down into the respiratory tract. Now, we didn't anticipate this. I don't think the virus cares where it infects as long as it can reproduce, but it so happens that this particular variant seems to be affecting lower parts of the lungs. Now, having said that, the increase in hospitalizations in the UK, about two thirds of those hospitalizations are not for Omicron. They are with Omicron. They're incidental findings. But this idea that this these new variants are going lower down into the lungs could well explain, well explain the increased hospitalizations that we've seen in Portugal and are currently seeing in other places as well. So this is the major disappointment of this video that is infecting lower parts of the lungs. Uh, Dr. Griffin University of Leeds agrees it looks like these things are switching back to the more dangerous form of infection, so going lower down in the lungs. So this could be why that's causing particular problems. Now, um, let's look now at this next paper, which is uh, this one, which starts to give some evidence comparing the natural immunity with the vaccine-induced immunity and the combination of both types of uh, immunity, so-called hybrid immunity. This is neutralization escape. Again, this is talking primarily about the antibodies. Again, a bit disappointing. It doesn't talk about the B and the T cells, which have the longer memories, but it's in, there's some interesting stuff here. So variants BA1, BA2 uh, show substantial escape from neutralizing antibodies, that, that's known. And actually, they have the same uh, identical sequence of spike proteins. So the, the immune escape is, is generated by other parts of the virus other than the spike protein. But this does seem to indicate that it's possible 
that they're both affecting cells lower down in the respiratory tract. Now, comparison of neutralizing antibodies, uh, TETA, with WA1 2020 um, isolate and comparing that with B, basically comparing that with all these uh, Omicron variants. So these in red are all the Omicron variants. Now, what the heck is this WA1? This is uh, interesting. It's the original Wuhan strain, which the vaccines were made to combat, of course. So this original Wuhan strain, WA1 2020 so-called, was isolated in the USA uh, from an oropharyngeal swab of a symptomatic person returned from China, developed clinical disease way back at the start. So this is the original, this is the original uh, virus. So people have kept the original virus in specimens, in the lab, in tissue cultures, and they can compare it. So quite interesting, really. So we can compare the very first Wuhan virus with the current Omicron viruses. Um, so they had 27 patients all vaccinated with the Pfizer and booster. So two, two doses, at least two doses of Pfizer and 27 patients who've been infected with the BA1 or the BA2. A median of 29 days before, but it was a big range of two to 180. 13 days before. Now, why on earth they included people with such a short range of two days, I'm not sure, but they did. Now, this is interesting. In the vaccine cohort, uh, participants were excluded if they'd had the infection before, basically. So if, they, if they'd had it, or they'd had a, an antibody test to show that they'd had it, or if they'd received another vaccine, or they're on immunosuppressive drugs, they were excluded. So this is a vaccine cohort with those exclusions. Now, six months after the two Pfizer immunizations, neutralizing antibody TETA against the original strain was 124. Neutralizing antibody TETA against Omicron subvariants, 20. So much better immune response elicited by the vaccines to the original strain than the Omicron strains, explaining why we're getting so many infections after, after vaccination. Now, this next bit's a bit heavy but just stick around it only takes a few minutes two weeks after administering the booster dose of vaccine neutralizing antibody teachers against the original strain were 5783 pretty good ba1 it was only 900 so that's what a sixth or something so against the original strain the vaccines were generating a teeter of antibodies of 5,783 against BA1900, against BA2892, against BA2121140 and against BA405275, which is 21 times lower. So we see that the original vaccine is not producing good neutralization. It's not blocking up those uh, spike proteins anything like as effectively against Omicron as it did against the original virus, 21 times roughly less effective. Now, um, what about natural immunity? Well, um, this is among participants who had been infected with BA1 or 2. Now, unfortunately, most of these have been vaccinated as well because we don't have, don't have enough people now without vaccine to include in the study. So th these people basically had hybrid immunity and we'll see that this is way better. So... Um, Medium neutralizing antibody teeters against the original, over 11,000. BA1, uh, 1740. BA2, 1,910. BA2, 1,550. BA4, 5, 590. 18.7 times less effective. So if we can compare, if we briefly compare there, we've got, so th th these, are the, um, these are the vaccine ones vaccine alone and uh, the, the, these figures here are, are vaccine plus natural immunity so we see that with a natural immunity uh, that's the vaccine alone that's vaccine plus infection that's the vaccine alone that's vaccine plus infection that's the vaccine alone that's the vaccine plus infection way higher numbers that's the vaccine alone that's the vaccine plus infection so we are getting way high numbers with hybrid immunity. Now, frustratingly, this doesn't tell us what these figures will be had the people in the vaccine plus immunity, plus natural infection ones, not been vaccinated. We don't know. Would it be as good? Probably not far off it, I would have thought. But we don't know. 
you can strike that thing I've just said because we simply don't know. It's me speculating. We do know from other studies that natural immunity is pretty good. Um, so what we can say there is that the hybrid immunity is definitely way better. Um, how much of that would have been due to natural immunity? I suspect quite a lot of it, but we simply don't know. So, um, but of course, despite this, we're still getting lots of breakthrough infections. Um, just show how out of date, though, the vaccines are for the original Wuhan strain now. So, but but the BA1 vaccine that's been developed is also out of date now. So, but <laughs> but um, the authorities we've looked at are saying it should still help to protect against serious disease and therefore death. Anyway, the, these data, this is direct quote from uh, this, going back to this paper here, direct quote. Um, these data show that BA2, BA12-1, uh, BA4 and BA5 subvariants substantially escape neutralizing antibodies induced by both vaccine and infection. But if you've got both, it looks like the infection is conferring a bigger advantage, but we're still getting the reinfections. But thankfully, they're not getting sick as much. SARS coronavirus 2 Omicron variant has continued to evolve with increasing neutralization escape. This is the modality of, this is the driver of evolution. It is the immune escape that's driving the evolution. Um, and then a couple of final quotes from this paper. These findings provide immunologic context for the current surge caused by BA2, 12, 1, BA4, BA5 subvariants. As we know, so for example, in the States, this has been the main one. Uh, then that's getting more now, but this one's taking over more and more BA5. Uh, even in populations with high frequency of vaccine and BA1 or BA2 infection. So to conclude, the antibody response um, is better if you've had vaccine uh, and infection compared to people who've only had the vaccine. How that compares to people who've only had natural infection, we don't know, but we suspect it would be fairly good if they've had natural infection and survived that to generate natural immunity. The antibody response to the Omicron variant is way, way, way less than the original Wuhan strain. That's why we're getting so much breakthrough infection with the vaccines. The thing I'm concerned about, though, is not so much the breakthrough infections. The thing I'm concerned about is it going into the lower parts of the lungs, causing the acute respiratory distress syndrome again. And it seems BA4 or 5 are more likely to do that. Now, if this is correct, hospitalizations will go on increasing for a few weeks yet. Then I believe, like Portugal, they'll start to go down. But it could mean that health services are in for a, a rocky next few weeks um, putting extra strain on on resources that are already very, very stretched indeed. Um, what comes after BA4 or 5, of course, we don't, we don't know. But looking like, I mean, we've talked about this all the way through. We've said that the Omicron was less pathogenic than the, the previous Delta. BA1 came and we said BA2 didn't seem to be more pathogenic than BA1. But now it is looking like BA4-5 is more pathogenic than B1, B2 and the B2 subvariants. So I hope that made sense. It was a lot to cover in one, uh, in one video. Um, but it does mean there's going to be more people in the high risk groups potentially getting ill, unfortunately, over the next few weeks, not enjoying significant immunity against reinfection from previous Omicron infections. And I don't know this, but I suspect earlier Omicron infection is conferring um, a higher degree of protection against severe illness and death with the later Omicrons. We suspect that's true because the BA1 and the BA2 will induce a B and a T cell response and some memory cell response, even if they don't produce a good antibody neutralization effect. So that's enough for now. Thank you for watching.